Let's look into the enormously worrisome case of Asian carp, a major threat to the future of the Great Lakes. This is the cover of my third Super Uper book, Rockman to the Rescue. The story of real life artist Alexis Rockman, who is brought to the Great Lakes region to draw attention to the dangers of invasive species. This is his worst nightmare. He's riding an Asian carp in Lake Michigan outside the city of Chicago. I said, his worst nightmare? Actually, it will be our worst nightmare if it ever becomes true. Because even though the size is a little bit of an exaggeration, they really are big fish, it's no exaggeration to say that Asian carp could ruin the Great Lakes if they ever find their way into the largest freshwater system in the world. This is an image from my second book, the character of Ben Steele. He's holding not one, but two Asian carp. Sure, you're thinking that's just an illustration. No big deal, right? Well, this is a real photo, and that's a real fish. No wonder almost everyone agrees that Asian carp poses a huge potential problem for the Great Lakes. Asian carp is the generic name given to the family of fish that includes big head carp and silver carp. They are ferocious feeders that outcompete native fish and leave a trail of environmental destruction in their wake. A government report once compared the threat of invasive species like Asian carp to a never ending oil spill. Big head and silver carp, along with grass carp and black carp, were intentionally imported to the U.S. from China in 1963 as a direct response to Rachel Carson's landmark publication of Silent Spring, a book about the dangers of unchecked chemical use. So good intentions brought Asian carp to North America, where they were used to control algae growth in aquatic fish farms, reduce weeds and canal systems, and even act as a form of sewage treatment. Mistakes, of course, happen, and this was one big blunder. Flooding allowed these captive fish to eventually escape into the Mississippi River Basin and slowly make their way north into the river and its tributaries. For the next two decades, they advanced an average of 35 miles per year. Initially, scientists assumed their northward journey would be stopped cold by the frigid temperatures they encountered the further they got. But like many species, they were able to adapt to many freshwater environments. The biggest problem with Asian carp is not that they eat other fish, but that they eat the food that other fish need to survive. Asian carp lack a true stomach, so they eat continuously. They eat, eat, eat up to 40% of their weight in a single day. They eat primarily plankton, the vital food source for other fish. And because they eat so much, our native fish might eventually starve as a result of the decreasing amount of plankton available. And that means ultimately, they disappear. In fact, by 2017, big head carp and silver carp comprised more than 90% of all the fish in parts of the Illinois River. And big head carp are indeed big, up to five feet long and over a hundred pounds. Imagine the size of a young boy. The other problem with Asian carp is they jump. Silver carp explode out of the water like they were shot out of water cannons. They can jump up to six to ten feet, two to three meters when disturbed. Whether it's the rumble of the motor or vibrations in the water, silver carp go crazy when boats approach their beds. A scientist from Malaysia once told me that people back home were fascinated by the jumping ability of Asian carp here in the U.S., which they saw as quite unusual and quite delightful. In Asian cultures, carp are a sign of good fortune. Carp can sometimes change into dragons, which are revered as symbols of power, strength, and good luck. It looks funny when you see these terrifying torpedoes shooting through the air. But Asian carp are big enough to injure boaters and water skiers, as well as damage boats and onboard equipment. A 30 pound carp is equal to two bowling balls. Would you want to get hit by two bowling balls? <laughs> I don't think so. While Asian carp do not kill people, they can cause serious injuries. A man tubing behind a boat in the Mississippi River 
fractured his nose, orbital bones, and skull when he was hit in the face by a silver carp. And a competitive water skier had her jaw broken by a flying fish. Asian carp have a dark gray, silver-like color with eyes that are set much lower than most fish. Perhaps an evolutionary effect of being bottom feeders, pulling their vision closer to their desired target. When I watch them swimming in the display at the Shedd Aquarium in Chicago, visitor after visitor remarked how it looked like the Asian carp were swimming upside down. Asian carp have extremely high reproductive rates, which cause rivers and lakes to become overpopulated and destroyed when they insist on devouring every morsel in sight. Each female can produce up to one to two million eggs per year. They multiply super fast. The only thing standing between Asian carp and the Great Lakes is the Chicago Sanitary and Ship Canal, where the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers installed an electric barrier in 2002. It was originally to stop gobies from migrating into the Illinois and Mississippi rivers. But when that failed, bureaucracy moved too slow, the barrier was repurposed to stop Asian carp. The idea is that when the fish swim into the range of the barrier, they'll feel the electric shock. It won't kill them, it just makes them feel uncomfortable and forces them to turn back. When scientists feared the multi-million dollar contraption might be failing in its new mission, they installed a second barrier, and eventually a third barrier. To this day, government agencies and their partners, both in the U.S. and Canada, conduct Asian carp research focused on early detection, risk assessment, and development of control tools and strategies. Rapid detection of Asian carp is essential, and David Lodge and his team at the University of Notre Dame devised eDNA technology to pinpoint the location of these mammoth monsters. And when Lodge and his scientists started finding evidence of Asian carp on the wrong side of the barrier, people grew increasingly concerned. It led a small town bar manager in Bath, Illinois to organize a yearly fishing tournament that would encourage contestants to catch as many Asian carp as possible. When I heard that the teams get dressed up in costumes like it's Halloween for this redneck fishing contest, I figured I had to go see the event for myself. One team dressed like Vikings. This guy is smart. He's wearing a catcher's mask, which offered him protection from flying fish. Because like I said earlier, if you get hit, it can hurt. Ouch. Teams get two hours on the river with one important rule. No fishing poles allowed. Contestants use everything from giant nets to baseball bats. No guns allowed. And when the fish start jumping, you can almost just park your boat and wait for them to find a seat next to you. It's said that if you stay in one spot for 10 minutes, you will soon have a boat filled with Asian carp. This team dressed like sheep. I asked them, why you dress like sheep? They said, we came all the way from New Zealand and we have seven sheep to every human in our country. So we're honoring our heritage while we help you with your bloody Asian carp problem. And the fish are very bloody. When they hit anything, they bleed. They make a bloody mess. The day I was there, I saw more than a dozen boats, each of them filled with anglers hungry to catch as many Asian carp as they could. In two hours, the teams filled the back of a pickup truck, almost 5,000 fish. I asked the organizer, what are you going to do with all those fish? She told me we're going to grind them up and use them as fertilizer. Because they're bottom feeders and they're slimy and they're smelly and they're not good eating, most people won't eat them. That is, most people won't. This image from my Super Uper book, Rockman to the Rescue, illustrates the potential problem. Asian carp have been found in the Chicago River as close as nine miles from Lake Michigan, and their DNA has been found even closer. Time is running out. Some have proposed closing the Chicago Sanitary Canal, but some shipping companies are against that solution because to them, it's all about money. But money won't matter if Asian carp ever populate the Great Lakes. 
The arrival of Asian carp would decimate the $7 billion fishing industry. My home state of Michigan would be hit especially hard. Michigan draws the second most non-resident anglers to its water in the U.S., behind only Florida. Asian carp would be bad news. They say an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. In the case of Asian carp, every precaution is worth countless pounds. Remember, these are big fish. Through eDNA testing, we have fingerprint evidence that Asian carp are knocking at the door. And the day we discover they have slipped inside is the day it'll be too late to do anything about it. I hope you've enjoyed what I've shared about Asian carp. Please subscribe to my channel to follow more cases of invasive species. And as always, thanks for watching.